In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the midline of sinusoidal functions from their equations by looking at several different example problems. And before we consider these specific example problems, let's just remind ourselves what we learned in a previous video involving the midline of these sinusoidal functions. And we will do that by looking at the parent functions for the sine and the cosine. Though this graph right here, this is actually y is equal to the sine of some angle x, where the amplitude of this function is just 1. And recall with the midline that the midline of one of these sinusoidal functions is essentially the horizontal line that crosses exactly in the middle of this function. And one other way to define the midline is that it's the same distance from the peak and the minimum of these curves here. Or in other words, we know that the amplitude is 1, meaning that the distance from this horizontal line, this midline, to the peak is 1. But it's also true when looking at the minimum values that this distance from the midline to this peak here would also be 1. The amplitude in both cases is the same number. It is 1 and is that same distance towards the peaks and the valleys of our sinusoidal function. And we can write the equation for this horizontal line, this midline. This is just y is equal to 0 for the sine function. Though for this cosine function, it's actually the same as well. If we look at the graph of y is equal to the cosine of x, we just need to remember that the cosine of x comes from shifting the sine function pi over 2 radians to the left. Or in other words, this cosine of x is equal to the sine of x plus pi over 2. This is one of the trig identities. And by adding pi over 2 on the inside, it will essentially just shift the entire graph left pi over 2 radians and it will be the exact same curve. It will just be a shifted version of the curve. And you can draw in a rough sketch here just to get a general idea of what it looks like. But the sine and the cosine, you can think of as essentially the same function, just one is shifted compared to the other. And the midline works the same way for both of these. And what we saw in a previous video is that if we have some function, let's say f of x, and we add some constant to this, this will essentially take our function f of x, let's say this is what it looks like, and it will shift it up h units, meaning every point on this curve will now be h units higher. So we can roughly approximate this, looking something like that, though it's not a perfect picture. The general idea is that all of the y values were shifted up h units. And if we subtract h, then everything will be shifted down h units. So it really just depends if we're adding or subtracting. But the key takeaway here is that when we add to some function on the outside, that it will shift it vertically up or down. And by outside, I just mean in comparison to adding on the inside. For instance, if we had f of x plus h, this will lead to a horizontal shift as we saw here. So if we want to shift this midline from our parent functions up or down, we just need to add or subtract on the outside of this function. So if we take this y is equal to cosine x and we, let's say, add 4, then the midline of this function would be at y is equal to 4. It just shifts the midline up 4 units. Likewise, if we take, let's say, y is equal to the sine of x and we subtract 2, this will just give us a midline at negative 2. It shifts the midline of the sine function down 2 units. Now, with all this in mind, to figure out the midline of the sinusoidal equations, we basically are just looking at the outside. What are we adding or subtracting from our function? Since we know the parent function, whether it's sine or cosine, will have a midline value of 0, if we are adding 2 on the outside, that will shift the midline or the entire function up vertically two units, meaning that the midline equation for this sinusoidal function is just y is equal to 2. And keep in mind that we covered the amplitude in a previous video. That's the number 
on the outside that is multiplied by your sinusoidal function. In this case, it is one. So the amplitude of this function is one. And in a future video, we will cover what happens when we multiply our independent variable on the inside. This will cause a horizontal stretching and will essentially affect the period, how quickly this function will go through its oscillations. And we can also add or subtract a number like we do here, and that will shift the function left or right like we had in this identity here. So each of these numbers plays a role in transforming the function, but for our purposes, we're mainly just concerned with what we are adding or subtracting on the outside to figure out the midline. So now looking at this equation here, we can see that we're just subtracting 7 on the outside, meaning that the entire function, h of x, will be shifted down 7 units. And since the midline of the parent function was at 0, we shift that down 7 units, so that it is now at negative 7. Its amplitude would be positive 4. It's always the absolute value of the number you're multiplying by in front. And the negative will just cause a reflection. If, for instance, we made this negative, then it would just be a mirror image across the x-axis here. But the negative will just cause a reflection over this midline. And again, this 5 will affect the period, and minus 9 is what we call the phase shift. That will shift it left or right. And let's look at two more quick example problems, just so that we can feel comfortable about this. And in this case, we have the sine function. And again, we really only need to focus on what we are adding or subtracting to this function. We know this affects the amplitude, this affects the period, and this affects horizontal shifting. But for the midline, we are shifting everything up three units, meaning that the midline equation for the sinusoidal function is simply y is equal to three. And looking at one final question, we again have a sine function. And notice this one, we don't actually add or subtract anything on the outside. In fact, we could even rewrite this as y equals 2 times the sine of pi over 2x plus 3, and we are adding 0 on the outside, meaning we are not shifting the parent function up or down. And we know the parent function for sine has a midline value of 0, or midline equation of y equals 0. And since we are not adding or subtracting on the outside, we will not shift this function vertically. And this equation will also have a midline equation of y is equal to 0. It will have an amplitude of 2, and this pi over 2 here will affect the period, while this plus 3 will shift it to the left horizontally.